Right, welcome back to another video. Uh, this week I thought it might be quite interesting um, to have a look at how to operate a compact tractor. I've had this one for a couple of years now, uh, mainly used for mowing and hedge cutting, but it's really, really useful with a front end loader uh, for moving bulk material around, uh, a lot of grading, topsoil, uh, moving heavy rocks, all that sort of thing. So if you know about compact tractors, you might find this interesting. If you know nothing about them, uh, but you think they're quite cool, then also hopefully be quite interesting. Always, as ever, don't forget to um, head over to the website lawnmowingbusiness.co.uk. There's a huge amount of information on there all about how to set up a successful lawn mowing business. Um, loads of articles on there, we get loads of visits every month, so be sure to check that out. And if you can, please like and subscribe, because we're meant to say that sort of thing these days. Okay, so starting from the front of this tractor, this is a um, it's an Isiki TM3265. It's from about 2013, so it's 10 years old now, and it's got a manual transmission, this one has, but it does have a shuttle shift, so I'll show you that in a second. But if we start at the front, we've got the front end loader. Uh, this is actually detachable, but why you'd want to go to all the effort of taking it off, I do not know. You can just uh, drop the front bucket off if you need a bit more space. Uh, you can just operate it, and um, there's some clamps down here. Uh, so it only takes 30 seconds, if that, to, to take the front bucket off. So it's really, really simple, but so useful, so useful. Um, coming back to the main area, uh, you'll see that up here we've got all the hydraulics, and this operates the uh, the front loader here. So once we start up, I'll show you how that works. Uh, usual clocks and everything, hour meter, it's all pretty simple, indicators, horn. This is the shuttle, so this will allow you to go forward, neutral or reverse. So although that might seem quite straightforward, by the time you add in the fact that you've got various different ranges of gearbox, it does become a little bit more complicated, but once you're used to it, it, it it's very, very simple. On this side, we've got the clutch pedal, and then just down there, you can see we've got the, um, the accelerator. Over that side are the brakes. And down here is the handbrake. So on most ICE keys, uh, everything in orange is to do with the drive of the machine. Uh, everything in yellow is to do with the PTO. And then the gray stuff down here is to do with the hydraulics. So um, on this particular machine, we have a two speed uh, transfer box. So you can either choose uh, low range mode or high range mode. Now, I only ever use low range mode if I am doing some really, really slow loader work or if I am um, just, just need that extra bit of control or if I'm moving something very heavy and I'm in very boggy ground, that's when I'll go down into low range mode. Uh, high range mode I use most of the time. And funnily enough, second gear high range is, is pretty much my go-to gear. If I'm mowing a large area, I might go up to level three. Four is pretty much top speed. It doesn't have much torque in high speed four. Um, and one, again, I might, I might use low, high speed, high range gear one for uh, loader work and things like that. But interestingly, on uh, this manual tractor in comparison to a manual car, for example, you can actually pull away in any gear. So you can pull away in low range one if you want to, and you won't go anywhere very quickly, or you can pull away in, in um, high range four, and it'll dip a little bit, and then off you go at top speed obviously then controlled by the uh, by the accelerator or if you need to set a particular set of revs to use an implement on the back such as a 540 rpm uh, mower like i've got on the back of here you can use this as a hand throttle it's almost like a cruise control and that will set your uh, minimum revs so good if you're doing a lot of space in an open area uh, and you just want one set speed for the most part in gardens i just use the accelerator set that i guess it's quite useful for hedge cutting if you need to set a certain because uh, the higher the revs uh the higher the pressure on the hydraulic pump so uh yes over here as well then you've got the um this is for the different ptos now a pto is a power takeoff and that is uh, one of these little devices down the back here so it's directly connected to the gearbox and it will spin this pto which then turns the gearbox on this there's a mower on this one um, and that's how you engage or disengage that. So that's basically just a clutch on there to, to, to bring that in or not. And then you've got a central PTO on this one as well. So you, so 
you could get an option of a of a of a mower mounted underneath here and uh, underneath there there'll be a shaft and so that's how you would have engaged that again so these are both um sorry this one this one's the mid one that's one the is, is the rear one this is 2000 rpm this one's a 540 rpm uh, the seat is quite good on these um, because it's got full suspension you set all your weights and everything in here it's got the fold down armrests and then you can uh, it springs along uh, so if you're going over bumpy ground really really comfortable so coming around the back here I've currently got my Wessex CRX 150 mower which is a 1.5 meter mower attached to the back of it it's a three blade unit all fitted with mulch blades and nicely on this unit it's also uh, got the roller on it as well so let's see if we can just have a little look up under here so yeah they are so it's a three blade setup gearbox it's really straightforward um, and then you've got these big cast wheels at the front here uh, that help it uh, so it doesn't scuff up the ground when you're turning on tight corners and things uh, this is the, if you've ever heard of anything called a three-point linkage, this is what it is. So there's point one there, there's point two there, and then there's point three down there. And all the three-point linkage does is it enables you to lift up whatever item you've got on the back. So for me, I either run this or I run a big hedge cutter. Uh, and then that is controlled with this unit down here. So this lever. So if you look here now, if I bring this down, it will... There you go, drop the mower down to the ground. And you set the speed of how fast you want that to drop uh, with the knob there in the center, faster or slower, and you just adjust that depending on the weight of your equipment at the back. Now, interestingly, it's, um, you could drop uh, a unit with the engine off because the hydraulic pump isn't running, um, but that will, you can't lift anything up again because all it is you're just releasing a valve and it lets all the hydraulic fluid just run straight back uh, through into the circuit so there's nothing we can do with that here now um, these two levers so one of the things um, you're looking for on a tractor is how many of these uh, hydraulic outputs you've got so you've got a feed and return on each circuit feed and return so on this one I'm able to run two different uh, circuits um, A and B and C and D together so the oil will come out of this one through your implement and then back into this one and the same with this so you could use that for hydraulic tipping trailers I use it for my hydraulic powered hedge cutter could be could be anything like that and those are just controlled uh, with this so you've got up and down up and down and then you've got dump all the hydraulic pressure by pushing it forward and uh, one of the things that this tractor doesn't have is it doesn't have a flow lockout um, on the hydraulic circuit so if you, you can only pull it or push it and then that will that will send the um, the hydraulic fluid in or out of those outputs at the back but what it doesn't do is hold on continuous so we've had to get a bit Heath Robinson with it and we just use a bungee cord tied around here onto there and then there we go now we've got continuous hydraulic flow so they are little tip for you so the accelerator is just down here tiny little thing uh, and then these are the brakes. If you're on really muddy ground, you can disconnect them and you can brake each wheel individually. Uh, I've never found the need for that, so I don't worry about it. They just stay together and then it just works as one, one push. This here controls the loader. So you pull it down to lift the arm up, push it uh, forward to push the whole lot down. And then left and right is the tilt on the, um, on the bucket. So again, just, just as you can at the back, um, there you go you can push that forward you can drop it Look, now we've lost all hydraulic pressure that's not doing anything and um, the bucket's on the ground so let's start her up and then we'll see uh, just how to drive it so you'll notice I've got this framework up here uh, and why I have to enter from the left hand side that's because my my controls for the hedge cutter mount on there uh, I'll be putting that on in the next few weeks, ready for the autumn hedge cut at the end of the season. So um, I'll certainly show you that then. So stay tuned and subscribe for that. Right. So to start the tractor, foot on the clutch, foot on the brakes. And um, as with most older diesels, you've actually got to warm it up. So you give, you give the key a little bit of a turn to heat up the glow plugs, twist and release. So let's bring that bucket up again, now we're running. 
So we pull it down. There we are, bucket's up. As you see, look, we can push the stick to the side, twist uh, it, uh, tilt the bucket, and bring it back the other way for that. So really, e really easy to operate. And I like to just put it out of the way if, you, if you're running. Uh, so looking at that mower on the back, so we've got the stick down here to raise the hydraulics. So if we pull this, you'll then notice that we lift up the uh, the mower at the back. That's about uh, several hundred kilograms, actually. Uh, let's just tighten that off. Sometimes you might notice the hydraulics uh, are putting the engine under a little bit of load. So that's where you might just, there you go. We've added about another 100 RPM on there and then the tractor's really happy. So let's look at the, um, the gearbox down here. Oh, what I didn't mention was this is where your four-wheel drive is down here. So if you want four-wheel drive, you push that down. You want to release four-wheel drive, you lift that up. So it's just a differential lock. So let's start off in low range up here. And we'll do low range one. And then this selects forward and reverse. Make sure the handbrake is off. And you can just find your bike point on the clutch, lift off from the brakes, and away you go. So this is what we're looking at, 1,000 RPM in low range one. And even if we rev it, I mean, we're, st we're still barely moving. So to put it in reverse, that's neutral, reverse. There we go, we're backing up again. So that's, that's low range one. So let me put it in the high range gearbox, still in one. Let's go forward again. There we go. So that's a much better speed. We can make some progress. But if you're actually gonna try and get around the garden, that's probably not gonna get you very far. So I, I usually put it in two maybe. There we go. Two is a much uh, better speed really for this sort of thing. All right, so that's, that is high range two. Let's put it in high range four, and then uh, I'll show you what that means. So as you can see, it all starts to get a little bit exciting in uh, high range four. So let's put it back in two, because that's a safer, uh, safer way to be. What I'll probably do now is show you how we engage the PTO on the uh, on the mower so let's make sure we're we've got the parking brake on we're in neutral we can be in gear up here that's fine because this is in neutral release off the clutch release off the brakes okay we're safe whenever you want to um, engage the mower on the back let's drop it down so pop that down and you can see the mower dropping down to the ground down there and then over here, we'll input the clutch because that takes the pressure off the gearbox. We'll engage the PTO drive. And then now you can hear at the back there that the mower has started. And because it's a 540 RPM implement, we need to set the revs in here. So we're all the way up at 540. So that mower is now running at 540 RPM. So we'll disengage the clutch to the PTO. We'll wait for that to slow down. We'll drop the revs back on the engine. Take out 100 of, there we go. Take that 100 revs back up again. Really nice and simple. So now, now that the blades have stopped turning, we can disengage that PTO. And if we release off the clutch again, now the, now the mower isn't turning. So we'll bring her up again. I like to lock this out just because it's quite a heavy implement on the back there. So there we are, we'll turn him out. He's locked in, so now you can't, uh, that's not gonna drop. Um, and then we're gonna have a look at doing some loader work. So I'll just show you quickly how that works. It'll be fun and interesting doing it with one hand on a manual tractor. So we're gonna go for high range three to make a bit of transit across the garden. All right, off we go. All 
Right, so over here is a pile of topsoil I've got where I'm doing a bit of levelling work. So you'll see back there I've just taken out a bit of a bump. And uh, so this is an example of how the, uh, the front end loader works. So don't forget, you can lift it up by pushing uh, down on the stick, put it down, and then you tilt your bucket by going left and the right. So because I'm trying to do this one-handed, let's put it in low range one. Make sure he's in. I don't need the uh, diff lock on for the four-wheel drive because it's not muddy. And then what I want to try and do is get the bucket so that it is level with the ground. So you can see here, that's not gonna do much scooping at all. So what I really wanna do, if I lift it up from the driver's seat, I can then angle it. So you'll see that's still not level enough. So that's the sort of level that we're looking at. If we're actually gonna do any useful scooping, that's, that's the sort of level we're looking at. So, if we jump up onto the tractor again, uh, we can put it into uh, drive forward. Let's bring that down, level him up a little bit. Oh, we've got that rock there, haven't we? Right, let's come back a bit. Okay, there we go. All right, we'll drop the, uh, drop the bucket down, put it in forward. All right, here we go. Now you drive into your pile until you feel a bit of resistance, and then you kind of drive forward and you curl the bucket at the same time. And then uh, before I do anything, as all gents like to do, you give it a little shake. You get rid of all of the, uh, the bits and bobs you don't want. And then you can back up and you can go and dump that somewhere. So let's put that back in the pile. So there you have it. That is a short introduction on how to use a compact tractor. This is about as complicated as they come on a, on a, on a small tractor. It's a 26 horsepower tractor, by the way. Um, runs this big mower absolutely perfectly. I've got a large hedge cutter as well, which I'll show you later on in the season. It runs that really well, um, 26 horsepower. I think um, I think he now call it the TM3267. That's the latest one. They also do a hydrostatic model which has got um, one pedal, no clutch pedal, and the accelerator and the uh, reverse pedal are all built into, uh, in, into a, single, um, a single foot switch, uh, foot pedal. So push forward and then go backwards. Or it might be split into two. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, and then also, rather than having these manual PTO engagements, they'll just have a big button on the dashboard down here somewhere, and you hit that, and that engages the, um, the PTO at the back. So there you go um if you've got any questions please feel free to leave them below uh, if there's anything you particularly want to see uh any 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 individual questions got about the tractor itself um anything you want to know about starting a lawnmower business please uh have a look at my other videos on the channel and definitely come go and have a look at the website lawnmowerbusiness.co.uk put a lot of effort into it so i'd really appreciate if uh if you'd head over there sign up to the mailing list to get um, notified of uh new articles, new stuff's going live every week. So uh, yeah, there you go. That's me and my tractor setup. Thanks very much.